Hi, my name's Russell Kelly, and I'm the author of the Indo-Pacific Coral Finder, the world's first easy-to-use underwater coral identification tool. That's me interviewing the corals for these training videos that I'll be presenting. I hope you enjoy them, and if you have any queries or feedback, please send them to coralfinder at gmail.com. So let's get started. The Coral Finder makes the basics of coral identification easy to grasp and lets you practice and polish your skills where the rubber hits the road, underwater. This video is a fast start tutorial on how to use the Coral Finder to get quick results. Be sure to check out the wealth of free resources including the in-depth training videos at www.coralhub.info for more technique and deeper understanding. It takes about five minutes to get your head around the Coral Finder and start getting results. If you are interested in corals, it will be the most useful five minutes you will ever spend. First you need to know the basic anatomy of a coral. Take the time to read the How to Use page inside the front cover of the Coral Finder. It's brief and to the point. Then read the glossary page. Pay particular attention to the illustration of the coral skeleton. Once you grasp the simple terms in blue, you will be able to use the Coral Finder to identify all the common coral genera in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Not bad for a five minute read. Okay, now that we know the basic anatomy of a coral, we need to know the anatomy of the Coral Finder itself. The front page is known as the key page. It classifies the world of hard corals by shape, form, texture and life habit. The key page contains key groups, all of which are simple visual concepts. For example, corals that are branching or corals that have meandering valleys on their surface. Other key groups are based on the way the coral lives. For example, whether it is attached to the bottom or not, or whether it has large polyps expanded during the day. The point is that the key uses simple visuals and keeps text to a minimum. When text is used, it is limited to plain language and the few key terms in blue that you learned from the earlier diagram. Why is this important? Well, it's because text has to be read and understood. What the eye and brain sees is not subject to translation and interpretation in the way that text is. For instance, all of these corals are branching. It took you less than one second to see and understand that. By using images and avoiding text, the coral finder can simplify the problem of what coral is that to a series of simple visual choices. For beginners, this is the most efficient way to learn. Another advantage of the Coral Finder approach is that it is small enough to be made into a robust plastic book that can be taken to where the corals actually are. Now, finally, we have an easy to use tool that we can take underwater and learn while we dive. I'm excited. Okay, back to the key page. Once you have chosen the key group, you then need to choose a look-alike page. You can do this by consulting the plain language prompts, which may ask you to judge the scale or some visual features of the coral. This gives you the look-alike page number to check out. Use the page tabs to select the page and there before you will be a grid of images with five or six of the best bets of what this coral could be. Let's give it a go to prove the point. Here's my beautiful wife, Rachel, doing a spot of coral bothering. That's a brand new coral finder in her hot little hand. She's excited. Step one, not surprisingly, is to have a good look at the coral you want to identify with a view to putting it into one of the coral finder key groups. Well, duh, I guess on this occasion, there's no need to go past branching, is there? For this, we will need to use a term from the visual glossary. Note that there is a diagram that refers specifically to branching corals. To move forward with our coral ID, we need to know if it has axial corallites. 
A corallite is the part of the skeleton where the coral polyp animal actually lives. An axial corallite looks different from all the other corallites and is found at the tips of the branches. They're easy to recognize. Check the branch and coral next to us. It has an axial corallite. Now back to our target coral. Clearly it doesn't. Problem solved. That was an example of how to use one of the 10 or so basic terms needed to use the coral finder to its full extent. Once you learn the terms in blue and you begin to feel the force, then nothing will stop you. Okay, so now we're on our way. Let's follow through on the key page. So, there is no axial corallite. To select a lookalike page, we now need to answer one of the following questions. Are the corallites less or greater than two millimeters? Let's look. They're pretty small, so let's go with less than two millimeters which suggests pages two and three. Rachel uses the tabs to open at pages two and three, and after a quick visual scan, decides that page two holds some promising candidates. From testing, we know that people usually see the best option almost instantly, such as the power of our iBrain supercomputer. But the Coral Finder also lets you confirm your choice with a brief character description and tip arrows. Confirming these characters is the best way to learn. The text in bold refers to important distinguishing characters, and the superscript numbers refer to the yellow tip arrows where some of these features are highlighted. Note the bold text. Branches have blunt, slightly flattened ends. Check. Coralite small and may have hoods. Check. The identification of the coral you seek to name has three steps. One, close comparison with the images in the coral finder. Two, cross-checking of the key features. And three, confirmation of true scale. Throughout the coral finder, True scale is indicated by the images in the yellow boxes next to the text description. Now, with your scale confirmed, read off the name on the left hand side of the page. This is the name of the coral genus. Next to the name, you will see a cross reference to the relevant volume and page number in Corals of the World. If you want to learn more about this coral, use the slate on the back of the Coral Finder to note the coral's name, Corals of the World reference data, and the Coral Finder page number. After the dive, there are a couple of ways you will be able to learn more. Firstly, go to www.coralhub.info, and under the Coral Finder menu, you will see the A to Z submenu. This is an index of all coral genera captured by the Coral Finder. Each link leads to a genus landing page containing a summary of everything you will need to know about identifying that genus, including video tutorials, tips and tricks, and the latest news from the coral world. Additionally, if you have access to Corals of the World, Charlie Veron's epic three-volume treatise, then use the cross-reference code to explore the species contained within that genus. So that ends our introduction to the Coral Finder and how to use it. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. There is a lot more to the Coral Finder than shown here, which we will save for future videos. But for now, the take home message is that high quality genus level Coral ID is possible. For more information, including more video instruction, please go to www.coralhub.info. Thanks for watching.